We bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Father, we thank you for giving us this great privilege to come into your house to begin a new year with you. What a good way of starting the year. We are grateful to you. For many are in the world, some are in different tribes, fortifying themselves, renewing covenants, but we are in your house refreshing ourselves. We are in your house committing our lives into your hand. And we know that one with God is majority, and that when we go with you, we are victorious. For if God be for us, who can be against us? Though the mountains be removed, we will not be moved. Though the whole earth shake, we will never, never be moved. Because we have you as our God. We therefore ask that you straighten us through your word. That as we hear from you today, your power will fill us. We will, be, we will be energized to run this race into 2019. We will not be weary. We will never be tired in any way. Because you will always renew our strength. We cover our lives with the blood of Jesus Christ. And we decree that the power of the Lord should move in this house. And let the power of the devil be put to shame. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Today we are considering the topic. Bring down the mountain. Bring down the mountain. Bring down the mountain. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 7. What are thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel, Thou shalt become a plain, and it shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto thee. Praise the Lord. The mountain that is referred to in this place is likened to be a thing that wants to obstruct your movement. Something that is in your way, that needs to give way so that you can move on on your way. Something that is not a part of God's plan for your life. Something that does not work out your progress, but it is there to move you backward. It is there to reduce you. When Isaiah, was, um, Isaiah talked about Jesus Christ and then John came to fulfill it, John, one of the cries of John was that every valley shall be leveled, shall be filled, and every mountain shall be removed because it was time for Jesus to move on and fulfill his ministry on earth. And while he was on earth, there were so many mountains, so many mountains before him. Uh, the one that was even so strong was Herod himself, who tried to kill Jesus. And because it was so serious, Jesus had to be taken to Africa for refuge. And in Africa, Jesus grew up before he went back. And God appeared. The angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph and said, the one who sucked him, the mountain, had been leveled. It's no more. You can go back and continue. Praise the Lord. A lot of times we pray, we fast, we fight the battle. But I want to draw our attention away from the enemy and look at ourselves. There is a mountain we must surmount first if we must be victorious over the battles in the world. And that is the battle within, the battle inside. 
there is always a mountain inside that we need to level first. Let's open our Bibles to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter chapter 7. Isaiah 7 verse 9. Uh, I like the NIV version. Please put it on the screen. NIV. My King James says, So say the Lord God, it shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is raising. And within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken, and that, that it be not a people. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Ramelia's son. Okay. This is the NIV. If you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. That means there is one mountain inside of us. Where do you find your faith? Where? Inside of you. Victory begins from inside. It doesn't start outside. If you must be victorious in life, if you must bring down any mountain at all, it has to begin from within. I know a man, singular person, who threatened the armies of the Lord for over 30 days. Each morning he will stand up after eating a book, after feeding very well and worshiping his gods, he will stand up, he will wear his armor and stand before the armies of the Lord and shake all of them. By the time he opens his mouth and finish boasting, everybody will fly. The battle we fight in this world should be attacked the way it comes. Every battle is unique. The way you won one battle, if you copy everything the same way you did it and paste it into another battle, it may not work. But there is one strategy that will always work, and that is the victory of your mind first. The victory inside. If you are not victorious in yourself, if you cannot surmount the battle inside and become a conqueror inside, you will never win any battle in this world. Praise the Lord. When David heard about the news, David went to the battle. When he saw the man, he remembered the beast he had killed. The lion and the bear. And he told himself, I am going to make this giant one of them. He was holding the weakest weapon so far. But inside of him, there was a giant inside. Before you could marry a king's son, you have to... It's not today that marriage has become sheep. In those days, you remember, uh, you remember when... Jacob served. How many years did he serve? How many years? He had to serve seven years. He served another seven years. Before he could get a wife, it's not today. That only guests will take you to their parents. And if you do not bring your stamp immediately and stamp it, you are in trouble. Say, so now you be the witch where they kill him. It was not like that. I'm much more a princess. The king had to offer, he said, look, we are weak. We are losing this battle. We need somebody who has victory inside. It's not that there was, there was no giant in Israel. The king knew that physically there was no physical giant in Israel. But they needed a giant in the mind. Somebody who is fearless in Israel, who could stand, just a man. 
And the man was always saying, the giant was always saying, Goliath, I need just one man, one man, just one man. If he can finish me, we will serve you. If I finish him, then serve me. Until a small boy came. And when he came, there was fire. David had to conquer the battles he had in his mind. I want to draw our attention to the battles in the world. And let us understand that no matter how fierce the battle is, once you have Jesus, you will always be a victor. And you will be a victor in the name of Jesus. But if you cannot, if you cannot win the battle inside, victory is far away. May the Lord help us. I say, may the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Turn your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs 18, 14. I don't know if there is anybody in the house that is giving up. If you hold the highest weapon in your hand and your mind is not willing to carry the trophy, if your mind is not ready for the victory, you will never, never, you will not win the battle. You will not. Proverbs 18, 14. It says that the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. Even when you are sick in your body, but your spirit is alive. Your mind is still very positive that this sickness will not kill me. Do we have doctors in this house? Do we have any doctor, any nurse in this house? Do we have doctors? Is there an, I know one doctor who sits at this house. Uh, I know there is Dr. Ben. Yes, but you did raise up your hand. You have become an engineer. You are still a doctor. Yes. Those who confess positivity, those who we say, uh, this sickness will not kill me. This sickness, never, you won't kill me. And when you go there, even though they are struggling with pains inside, they are able to communicate. You are able to see their smiles. Those people, they do better when it comes to recovery. But the ones who we always say, this sickness, this sickness, how kill me? Oh. Now only Brits are the Brits, so... Inside of me, I know I'm a dead man already. This sickness, huh? if you watch them, see, if you push your soul down, David prayed the prayer. He said, oh my soul, why are you cast down within me? Why are you cast down within me? He said, hope in the Lord. When your spirit is cast down, because of the happiness around you, don't never in your life give up. Don't give up. Because if you win yourself, you can never stand at all. Just like the Isaiah 7 we read, that if you do not stand firm in your faith, you will never stand at all. You will never stand. Because the battles in the spirit realm I always fought and won before the ones in the physical. Praise the Lord. It was not ordinary battle. When Balak saw the children of Israel, he had to go and invite a prophet to come and speak into their lives. Speak failure into their lives. Because he knew that the battles he understood that the battles of this world manifest in the spirit realm first before they come in the physical realm physically. And once you are a success in the spirit, in the physical world, you will always be a winner. Praise the Lord. So when your spirit is down and you are ready, somebody is pushing you into the grave and you seal your mouth you don't make confession with your mouth and cancel whatsoever thing that has been done in the spirit 
and pick up your faith, your authority that you have in Christ Jesus and counter it, you will go like that. Let me tell you one secret. How many of us have seen anybody performing magic? Magic. You've seen? Yeah? When they say, say yeah, you say yeah. Yeah, you say what? Yeah. Say conjure. You say conjure. Conjure. Appear. You say appear. What they are doing, they want to manipulate you, but they need your consent. They want you to agree. They want your spirit to agree with their spirit. Once you say yea, you have submitted to the power in operation in that environment. You will submit. So an enemy has made the contention and they are manipulating you to key in and agree. Then somebody will wake up in the morning and begin to say, ah, this dream was too terrible. Will I survive this thing? I'm not, I don't think I will survive this problem. More. Somebody has made a manipulation. You are agreeing, concurring to what has been done in the spirit. May the Lord deliver us from ignorance. I say, may the Lord deliver us from ignorance. In the name of Jesus. Ephesians chapter 5. We have to learn something. Ephesians chapter 5. I want to read from verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time. Because, because what? Because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, we are in his essence, but be filled with the Spirit. I was talking with somebody recently, and I told the person, the time that we are in now, the time is already drunk. The time is drunk. If you are a believer, and time does not determine the way you react to things, you are not living well. Time controls every activity on earth. Tell me one thing. One activity in the world that is not subjected to the manipulation of time. Is there anyone? There is time for everything, says Ecclesiastes chapter 3. But the Bible is saying that the days are evil. And if the days are evil, we have to walk circumspectly. That means you have to be cautious. That word to be circumspect is to be cautious, is to be careful. You are mindful of every action you take. And because you have at the back of your mind that it may carry along itself consequences. The days we live in, they are evil. So we don't need to be drunk with anything at all. Either by wine, either by anger. One of the things that destabilizes Christians, one of the things that make Christians to become so destabilized in their prayer life is the manipulations of their emotions. The Bible says that we should rejoice always. Again, I say what? Rejoice. If you can sustain this temple in your life every time, you will always be a victor. A lot of times, we give room to manipulations, things in our environment to influence the way we live. We give room to other people to manipulate us. If you must win the battle in the world, you need a lot of stability inside of you. You have to walk with carefulness at every point in time. At every point in time, you have to be careful at every point in time. If you are married, you have to understand that there is always a battle inside. If you are with children, there is always a battle inside that you must win first. 
If you can't win that battle, the one outside for you, you will never, never win it. David had a problem in um, 1 Samuel 36. And David was greatly distressed for the people spoke, spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his son and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in his what? In his God. He encouraged himself in what? Not in alcohol. Not in fights. Physical combat. And what did David did? He came from a battle. And by the time he got home, he discovered that everything had been taken away. His wife's children, all his belongings, the, the whole community had been carried away. And the people became so angry. David had been driven from the throne. He's supposed to be the king by that time, but he was in the bush. Moving from one camp, temporary camp to the other, he was wandering in the bush. He had just few persons consoling him. But the devil, by the time they took their families away, the devil, Satan entered their minds and pushed them against David. The only people he could call out to, to go and help him, the people turned against him and wanted to stone him to death. Wait till you're all too much. We have been driven from that side. And here are we again. Another battle. Now our families, everything is taken away. Today, David, you must die. David looked inward and encouraged himself in what? In the Lord. In the battles of this life, if you have nothing inside that you will look into and encourage yourself, you will never win. You will never win. How many of us can fight? Me, it's been many years I fought, physical fight. But how many of us can fight without anger? You are not angry yet you want to fight. Who can fight without being angry? Eh? Oh. The strength, the strength of fight, physical combat is anger. Even when you are tired, but you are still angry, you could still do something. Because there is a force inside of you pushing you that, no, I will not give up. I must do something. I must do something. If nothing is pushing you from inside, you will never, never kill a fly in the battle of this world. Unfortunately, a lot of us, when we have problems, we tune to comedy, comedy, and we begin to feed ourselves with comedy. I go die, go done, basket mouth. I book it for who? For who? And by the time you begin to feed yourself with these things and feed yourself with these things, you think there is a difference. Listen, there is a difference between solving your problems and ameliorating them. I mean, just suiting your wounds. I mean, let me explain. You have a problem, eh? Uh, you are taking painkillers instead of maybe a physical wound. Instead of taking antibiotics, you are taking painkillers. Painkillers, you want to kill the pains. Instead of taking something that will heal the wound, you are always taking painkillers. You don't want to feel the pain. The wound is dead. Tomorrow it will be dead. You take painkillers. Why not face the problem? One of the things we must also look at is that we have to be sincere to ourselves. If there is a battle and you are failing, tell yourself, I am failing. If there is a battle and the battle is fierce, 
Tell yourself this battle, no be small battle. This battle is strong. David did not undermine Goliath. He knew who Goliath was. He, you don't need to underestimate your enemy. If your enemy is coming to you with jet fighters and you are preparing arrows, eh? Arrows. Sorry to say, some of the fight, please understand, some of the fight we have against the East is to make them, is to fold their hands so that they will not overgrow. You understand me? Eh? Some of the fights we have against the East, we want to fold them and make sure they don't have much wings so that in case of any eventuality, what happened before will not happen again. Do you understand me? Do you understand? But whatsoever thing God has written must surely come to pass. All I pray for is the will of God. Praise the Lord. We must not underestimate the strength of our enemy. Any day, any time. When you feed yourself with painkillers, but you are, if you are not sincere to yourself, but begin to deceive yourself. If you are 30 years old in life, you are 30 years old, you are not married, you didn't go to school, you did not learn work, you have not learned any trade, you are not doing any business, you have to be sincere to yourself that you are on your way to where? To failure. You have to be sincere. We should not use makeup to cover age. If you are failing, be sincere to yourself. Tell yourself that in this battle, I am losing it. Why must we deceive ourselves? We know there are things that technology has so much advanced that somebody that is 40 years old can look like 20 years. Eh? with the power of makeup can look like 20 years old it can cover all the holes on the face but there is one thing it will not cover it will not cover wrinkles wrinkles will always be there it will not cover wrinkles so, So whenever people are telling you, you are doing very great, you, are, you look so beautiful, you are looking younger every day, be sincere to yourself. That even though they are telling you this, I went to a barber to barb my hair, and I told him, look, if you want to barb this hair, no barb me small picking hair. I have to be sincere. I should not deceive myself. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, <laughs> we have to, eh? we have to read the times at every point in time. If we continue to tell ourselves sweet, sweet things, sweet, sweet things, and we are failing, you tell yourself sweet, sweet things, and you are failing, one day, it will look like the evening sun. When we used to go to farm, you are walking, walking, walking. Okay, so there is still time. There is still time. And in those days, we don't normally go with wristwatch because of rain. There is time. There is time. Before you know, <laughs> evening sun. We call it have your war. Say deceiver. It will deceive you to walk more. See, so you are walking. See, so you are walking. Before you know, it's night. In the battles of this world, another thing we must do is that we must keep our emotions stable. I have mentioned it before, but let me just say a few words about it. How many of us build our happiness on others? There is a battle within that you must win. 
And for those who have families, either brothers or sisters, those who are close to you, those you tell your secrets, you have to be careful. If not, they will make you lose the battle. I've asked this question several times and I want to ask it again. How many of us, maybe you are married, your couple or your child, your father, your mom, you just see the person, you are just angry against the person. You just develop unnecessary anger. The person did not wrong you. The person did not offend you. You just see the person, you are just angry. You don't just want to see the person. Who has it happened to before? Has it happened to you? You have experienced it. You have to know. The Bible says, walk circumspectly. Walk not as unwise, unwise, but as wise. Because the days are evil. It could be that there are powers of darkness around. Projecting hatred. Covering the atmosphere with hatred. Once you see the person, they project the hatred. And if you are not careful, you'll be carried away by those emotions. We have to understand the oppressions of the enemies. You want to fast. You want to pray. It is there the man wants you to cook before you go to church. It is then he knew that he needs a whole soup. And you want to, you are fasting. The man knows every Friday, every Wednesday, you fast. Said today, if I know it's a whole soup, no go to church. In the Christian family, you have a lot of fights. So much fights. And if there is war in your home, where will you have peace in this world? If there is war inside, open your Bible to Jeremiah. Let me show you something. Jeremiah 12, 1, 5. Jeremiah was complaining to God. And this is the reply God gave Jeremiah. If thou hast run, if thou hast run with the footmen, and they have wearied thee, then how canst thou contend with horses? Do we understand that? And if in the land of peace, wherein thou trusted, they weary thee, then how will thou do in the swelling of Jordan? NIV says in the thickets of Jordan. If in your home you feel defeated as a father, as a wife, you feel defeated. As a child, you feel disappointed. There is no peace in the home. Every time there is always war. How will you be able to fight the enemy outside? Every time we look at, lots of times we look at the enemy outside, somebody bringing a battle, but there is always war inside. If the days are evil, you should always be ready for the battle. The Bible says, having done all, to stand. For us to stand all the time, we have to be watchful and make sure there is peace in the house. There is always peace in our homes. There is, there is power in unity. So much power you have in unity. When there is peace in the house, God will be in the home. When you take time to fast and then you commit some issues into the hand of the Lord, you see God manifesting himself and removing some misunderstanding from the home. Before we fire the witch inside the village, in our village, before we fire the power in the water world, let us always look at our homes. I beg every one of us, Pick up the, uh, the home cell Bible study. The home cell Bible study for last year. The last uh, study. Be at peace with yourself. Be at peace with yourself. Just read it. If you are not at peace with yourself, you can never win the battles of this world. 
Some of us are always fighting ourselves. I am a failure in this world. I am good for nothing. I am not beautiful enough. I am too short. I am too slim. Always, all the time, you are always in a constant battle against yourself. Somebody called me a few days ago and told me, ah, I don't born no. I have a baby now. I then asked her, you see now, your marriage is now ahead of some marriages. When you were not married, every time it was a war. I want to marry. Um, it, I told that some of the people you did flower guests for, chief breast made for, some are there with our children now. You got married last year and here you are with a baby. Your life is not to be measured with anybody's progress in the world. Your life is unique. You are fearfully and carefully, wonderfully made by God. Specifically, you were created. We should not be in a constant battle with ourselves. If you're always fighting yourself, do you know some of the people? Eh? Because a lot of persons, many, many, especially ladies, if you ask them, why do you dress like this? It is because somebody told them something, you are not beautiful enough. And they are always fighting that word. They are, I had my own experience. When I was still a, a, a baby, taking breast milk, my mom told me, because I had a mark on my face. It was dark. There was a line. A scar on my face like this. People used to laugh at me. So if I want to take photograph, I will use this side to take the photograph. So that the mark on this side will not appear. But that is all rubbish. It is rubbish. You have to love yourself for who you are. And I see a lot of people going, you want to slim down, you want to slim down, you want to see. Is God a fool? There are some people, that is the way God has made you. If everybody is tall in this world, there will be no variety. And the beauty of the world will be tampered with. If everybody is slim like me in this world, the world will not be beautiful. Variety is the spice of life. You have to love who you are. There was a time when I had accident and I was using crutches. There was a battle inside of me. If whenever I see anybody I know, I'll become ashamed. I try to hide myself. One day I asked myself a question. That am I ashamed of myself? If I am ashamed of myself, what right do I have against somebody to question somebody, a friend, a relative that is ashamed of my situation? I told myself this is self-defeat. So from today, I'm not going to be ashamed of my situation. I resolved in my heart that this is life. I have to face the reality. It has come and I have to adjust. Picking your child died five years ago. Till today, the child is still, the death is still living with you. Day by day, you wake up, you cry. You not go move on. Will you not move on in your life? If you have no husband, don't you have another thing to give your, your, your strength to? Every time, uh, God gave people a husband, he did not give me. God gave people children. He did. That is a battle you are engaging yourself and you will not win it. You have to be victorious in your mind over that battle. And tell yourself, no matter what happens, life must go on. Praise the Lord. Be on your feet, we have to pray. What is that mountain before you? First of all, I want a dead silence in the house. What is that thing that is eating you up? Even when they say pray in church, pray, 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 you don't pray. It is that particular thing you dwell on. It's not because you are strategizing so that you can get the victory, but all you are thinking of, God, why did you create me like this? Why am I like this? Me? I appreciate poor parents giving birth to me. I appreciate it. Me, I appreciate it. Yes, because it has positive effects in my life. 
Can you close your eyes? What is that battle in your mind? That mountain that you need to cast away. Maybe it's a name that people are, have given to you. That you have a sickness. And because of that, you have turned into a battle against yourself. How many of us are ready to cast off that load from our shoulder? In order to forge ahead in life. You are single, you are facing disappointments. And that is your own, your major focus in life. People told you you are not beautiful enough. And that is where you dwell on every time. People tell you you are poor. You have no job. And that is what covers the whole of your mind. You don't give your attention to strategize on how you can make it in life. Maybe the husband is always giving you challenge. The wife is always a challenge to you instead of a blessing. And that is where you dwell on and you see yourself as a failure in life. You are not yet a failure. You can forge ahead. It's not by might. It's not by power. But my spirit says, is not by might, is not by might, is not by power, is not by power. and lift up that mountain before the Lord. How many of us have made some resolutions that this thing is not going to be a concern to me again? Frivolous things that do not amount to battles that you have packaged as battles in your mind and every time you fight with them. Tell the Lord, Lord, I give them up to you. I'm giving them up. is that stigma that thing that is like a stigma or oh, is already a stigma in your life you want to remove your mind from it remember Peter when he removed his attention from Jesus and he looked at the wave and a battle arose in his mind and he became defeated in his mind Peter started sinking he was sinking because he was already defeated inside he was going down Open your mouth, tell the Lord, Lord, give me the power to encourage myself in you. Give me the grace to always draw strength from you. Give me the grace to draw strength from you. The grace, whatever happens in life, I should always be strong. Whatsoever thing I face, I will always say that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. up your prayer. Draw from you again. Round up your prayer. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 
Lift up your two hands to heaven. Lord, I pray for your children. I join my faith with our fathers in this house. And we release your grace upon your children. As many whose attention have been diverted to see themselves as failure, may the Lord God Almighty give you a refocus today. If you are here and you see yourself as a failure, you are always fighting yourself. You are, there is everything in the house you need in life. Food is in the house, but you are not adding any weight at all. Appetite you don't have. Even the man the Lord has given to you, the wife, you have no interest in the person. Because there is a battle inside. Today, may the Lord take away that load from your heart. As many whose souls have been cursed, yet even till now, their attention has been diverted. May the Lord God give you restoration today. Yeah. Whatsoever thing that the devil introduced into your life to reproach you before the Lord, may the hand of God's angel release fire upon it now. Yeah. That reproach is hereby taken away. Yeah. That thing that has become a weakness to you, that is your weakness. May the Lord give you strength. Like Paul, may you always say, whenever I am weak, I will say I am strong. For your strength is made perfect in my weakness. Therefore, I glory in infirmities. May that weakness become your strength in the name of Jesus. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website, www.egoeyeopener.com. Email us at hosannadavid at ymail.com or info at egoeyeopener.com. God bless you.